My cabinet has survived the wrath of the heavens. Oh man, let's, let's just get started. The customers of this project are actually my parents. And I started this project thinking that it was just going to be an ordinary, normal project that goes very well, as usual. Although, I was wrong. The main body of this cabinet will be made of a pre-finished maple plywood. I decided to design this cabinet where most of the corners are mitered, including the front frame. If this doesn't make sense, you'll see early on what I mean. Starting with the top, bottom, and two sides, I miter the front edge of each of them. Working with thin veneered plywood can be challenging, especially when doing miters, because the edges become very brittle and also very sharp. So I usually give them a bit of a sanding so that they don't cut my fingers, and this helps them also from getting damaged along the way. There will be a rabbited inset portion on the back side of the cabinet where the back panel sits, and I just cut that on the table saw. After cutting the middle shelf and its two support sides, I domino them in place to the bottom panel. And I'm using pocket holes on one portion it's usually a good idea to hot glue on clamping calls. That way you can clamp the miters together quite well, as you'll see in this video. But in this case, it turned out to be a bad idea. When I glue everything together, I just start with the middle, and then I will end by clamping on the sides. Unfortunately, here I realized that even gently prying off the clamping calls with a drywall knife ended up with tearing the veneer off in some cases. But luckily, there's always a solution in woodworking, and that's why I love it so much. So here I'm mixing up some Bondo all-purpose putty. This stuff is amazing because it sets up in about 20 minutes, and you can sand it in about 30 minutes. And then it's also the perfect filler for under paint because it will sand perfectly flat. So it's time to make the front frame and there are mitered corners along the front of the cabinet that the frame has to abide by. This is not a standard way to build cabinets. In fact, I've never seen them built this way, but I wanted to give it a try to offer a new, clean look. I basically just dry fit each piece into place to make sure that it fits correctly, and then I connect those together with, once again, the Festool Domino. Okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Corey, I looked up this Festool Domino machine that you use, and this thing's $1,200. And then you need a dust collector for it, which cost another $600. I absolutely get it. And in this case, I would use dowels in place of the Domino. They will offer similar strength and be far cheaper. Seeing as it wasn't practical to clamp the frame together, since all the outside corners were sharp miters, I decided to use wood glue on the dominoes and super glue and accelerator on the actual miters. That way I could hold them with hand pressure while the super glue set up and continue on to the next miter. With the frame all complete, it was time to glue it on and use brad nails as temporary fasteners. As always, it's important to clean up the glue squeeze out so that you're not chiseling it off later. 
And here I'm just cutting the middle support styles and they will be glued, brad nailed, and pocket holed on. The pocket holes hold the style and the rail firmly together. That way there are no cracks that develop on that joint after the spraying process. I left the plywood shelf a little bit shy from the front face, that way I could edge band it. And I used blue painter's tape as clamps for this part. At some point, I somehow managed to drop the entire cabinet off of the sawhorses and it completely destroyed two of the corners. Yep, it did. And I fixed it with that special Bondo. There are multiple pieces to the back of this cabinet because I used spare plywood rather than buying a whole new sheet for it. Now it's time to make the flat panel doors of the cabinet. After cutting them to size on the table saw, I marked out the locations for the hinges. Then I drilled to an exact depth using the drill press. This is a close-up of the hinge assembly. When I build inset doors on a framed cabinet, I use these brackets that mount on the back side of the frame. These blum hinges are designed to just clip onto those brackets. Gotta love that soft close motion. Prepping for paint is just filling all of the holes with the same Bondo. Flush cutting the edge banding with a router and sanding every single square. Don't get me wrong though, this Festool sander is so balanced that it makes sanding a little enjoyable. I used a chisel on any hard to reach areas, rounded over the corners on the doors very slightly, added temporary cleats to the bottom of the cabinet to protect the sides, and vacuumed everything in preparation for paint. For the paint on this project, I'm gonna be using this Enduro White Poly by General Finishes. This is actually my first time using this product, but what I did is I looked at the reviews and it says that the sheens are a little bit higher than normal, meaning the satin is a little bit shinier than people intend. So I decided to buy the flat and the satin and start with the flat with my first few coats in order to see what sheen I was building up. Here I'm spraying the first coat, the second coat, and third coat. Well, the finish is dry and it's time to clean this mess up. All right, now that everything is clean, we need to get everything put together, packed up, and to the installation. I wish it went that way. Last night I decided to unplug my mic since there was no need for sound and get the shop all cleaned up. And I'm starting to think that maybe it was a good idea that the audio was off. So it surely looks like these boards missed the cabinet in this clip, although I only wish I was that lucky. They did end up scratching the face of the cabinet, and the next morning I had to sand down that portion of the cabinet and spray it. This was actually on the install day, but since this product is water-based, it dries so fast I was able to sand, respray, and get it going. While my lovely touch-up coat was drying on the cabinet, I decided to get everything else ready to go and start the transport. I'm not gonna show very much of the installation process here, but I did have to cut out a few spots for an outlet and communications wire. 
Then the cabinet was set on a cleat that I put on the wall and it was attached with fasteners itself. Here's where I could finally take a deep breath and realize that this cabinet made it to my parents' house safely with no scratches and it looks absolutely fantastic. Here is the final product. I admit, I made a few mistakes this project, and honestly, I wouldn't change it for the world. Mistakes challenge us. Mistakes make us grow. Without the process of troubleshooting and overcoming and finding solutions, then we wouldn't have the potential for growth. And without the potential for growth, then I don't know where we would be. With that being said, thank you for enjoying my mistakes. And as always, thank you for watching.